Remember that Dunlop Sport Max can't be over the line when the light goes out, nor can the car be moving. So it must be stationary. The green flag will come out and that will mean the grid is clear to commence the start procedure. Everyone pulling up now into their bay. Last time out, Anton Di Pasquale bogged it down from green the pole flag, position. Green flag, green flag. These two on the front row had a great battle last night and Will Brown tried to sneak it up the inside of turn three. Watch for the light change and we are go for our final race at Sydney Motorsport Park this weekend. And a great start by Anton Di Pasquale. They change out of first to second at 110 k's and then they rush into the left hander. They're now already in fourth gear and they slide through that first corner. Anton covers, Will in second, the two Red Bulls side by side at turn two. Will Davison is next in the queue. They got a very different start because Will got a better jump than Anton, but the second part of the start was superb by Anton, and he was able to get down the inside. Jamie Winkup was able to maintain his spot on Van Gisbergen. Here comes Perkat. Big move down the inside at turn four on Kostecki, but he's on the wrong side now for turn five. And that's awkward because if you hung out too far and too wide for too long, then you can't get back for the next one. It's going to Perkat gets back down the inside to force the issue. He's going to drag Mostert with him if he can. Kostecki's on the outside. There's no room on the outside of the racetrack. And he tries to stay in there, but it's dirty on that side of the road. And he just gets away with it, Brody Kostecki, on a cold tyre and a dirty track. That could end poorly. Oh. And trouble here for Hazelwood. He climbs over the top of Tim Slade. And there's a bottleneck at the hairpin in the right-hander at turn eight. And they're all locking horns. It's a complete <laughs> cluster of supercars, okay, my we'll goodness. It it's a metallic feast coming out of there. There were cars all interlocked. They were five abreast coming out of turn eight. Running into each other, still running into each other. Hazelwood just got hit again then. I've never seen such chaos coming out of the hairpin. A block of supercars. Really bad. All negotiating the yeah, same piece of road at turn eight point. and somehow popping out the other side. Have a look at them. They're super glued to each other. And they're still alongside each other at 215 k. They're still bumping each other. They're teammates. That was Jack LeBrock and James Courtney bumping each other. This is far from over, folks. Oh, there, there you go. Jack LeBrock's just been punted. That's David Reynolds who's just copped a whack. <laughs> oh, they play for keeps, the boys. <laughs> and I think that's damaged now on Todd Hazelwood's car. That car just looked awkwardly positioned as he came over the top of the hill. Has he got some steering or other panel work damage? It looked like he was struggling to recover there. Those cars all jammed together. It's a race at the back of the pack and they're still all jammed up. Well, that's how it started. Hazelwood was doing the James Bond act up on the side of Tim Slade's car. That's how, right here, remember? The start of it. It's taken a lap to resolve. I remember all right. <laughs> that shot head on on the exit of turn eight. I've never seen so many cars, and there is a problem for Todd Hazelwood, unfortunately. I think there's some steering damage with that car. Repco replay. This is it. Now, this is and Hazelwood. Remember? Yeah, climbing up and over Tim Slade, and he got his right rear with his left front, and that damaged the steering on the Dunlop Super Dealer's car. This is all the crazy <laughs> stuff in the middle of turn eight. <laughs> 25 laps are remaining. Bunnings Trade Sydney Super Night. Race three of the weekend, and it's a nice margin in hand just on three seconds between Anton Di Pasquale and Will Brown, and Anton Di Pasquale in as well. That gives Will Brown the lead, and the margin was about three seconds when they I affected that in. stop. Go around the Red Bull guys here, mate. Drive through the Red Bull pit, through the Red Bull pit. Well, that's very nice of them. They're allowed to drive through the Red Bull pit. It doesn't usually happen. Being very gentlemanly as we come back into play our resumption of supercar racing. Nice job. What's this look like for Shane? We've got a bunch of cars in here now. Fair batch. We've got Van Gisbergen, and Heimgarten, a full with Jones and Pye. Did you see how many went on there? I think, two, I think two and two is my understanding. I'm just looking for the number. Actually, 
we say say fourth of Van Gisberg. Yeah, I, I didn't think he he had that many tyres when we were talking earlier after going and doing a scout around the back of the pit. Six laps difference between the tyres of the two cars with the saw with Mosfet and Slade. This way going to be clear. Waiting on one tyre. So we've got Jamie all over the back now of Shane. So this is reverse to what we saw at the beginning of the race when Shane was doing the hustling from behind. Now it's J-Dub, and oh, that was about as close as you dare to be in contact. Uh, great racing, but could potentially be bad for your employment, Shane. <laughs> yes. Yes, you, you're actually dealing with a future MD. Well, I'd like to be looking at the current MD's face in Banyo. I'd reckon that Roland Dane's face at the moment would be quite animated Roland. based on that. Sorry, Mark, Roland's not here this weekend. Yeah. Uh, he'll be joining us a little later in the season. We've had some great racing so far this weekend and a prospect of plenty more to come. Will Brown here fighting for a potential first supercar victory. Anton Di Pasquale trying to capitalise and claw back after a disastrous previous race from what was an incredibly strong weekend and a great showing. And after three months away, he's come back almost with new vigour. Last lap. Anton acknowledges the final lap from his engineer, Ludo Lacroix. They run into turn one off the Repco cable cam. Shows you the radius of that corner. This time, Anton doesn't get it into such an aggressive slide. It's just a little over three quarters of a second between the two of them. Look at the hands of the leader. Just sets the car into one position. Doesn't disturb it. Doesn't rock the platform. Doesn't disturb the tyre. He's just stroking it around this final lap now. I thought he did a, an amazing job in that previous race with some very old tyres when he came in on lap eight and had to get it through to lap 32, only changing two of them. So he's shown great touch in that regard and he's showing it again now. I thought he was gone three or four laps ago, the rate in which Will was catching him, but he's managed to survive. Whether Will used too much of the tyre on the way or whether Anton had a little in reserve, not 100% sure. We'll find out more after the race. But he's got a cushion now. He glides and slides off turn seven. Look at those hands. He sits it beautifully in position. He was just mucking around then. Yeah. He's just having a bit of a slide at that point. He's just having a tease. Yeah. Flicks the eyes into the mirror, checks the gap, knows he's comfortable. There's no need to cover when he gets to the final couple of corners. And he lines it up through the final corner for the final time this weekend. Slides are on, gases are up in second gear, hooks third gear. Now it's just a sequence of simple gear changes. Anton Di Pasquale's had an amazing weekend pace-wise, and he picks up maximum points in the final race in our first endeavour here at Sydney Motorsport Park. And Will Brown, a brilliant performance today, and he should be proud of that drive. Good arm work, that was fun. So I just watched the tyres trying to get to him, eh? And uh, I needed to make it happen then, and I didn't. So thanks for the car, guys. And that was the voice of Will Brown. So he's told us the story, torched the tyres to get there. And what a champion in the making that young guy is. Formula Four champion, Toyota 86 Racing Series champion, runner-up in Formula Ford, TCR champion, runner-up in Dunlop Super 2 last year. His moment is coming, Will Brown. It was. I thought it was going to happen today. He's an amazing young bloke. Oh, look at this. Nothing so close else. at the line, and that was James Courtney with the big squeeze on with Nick Percat to the line, and Nick got up in the end, 11th position by one hundredth of a second. Jack LeBrock's done a mighty job out there in the track assist entry to come home in eighth place. Cam Waters, nice recovery to get up into sixth as well. So Tickford have been able to fight back in the final one. Up six spots for Waters. Confirmation of our results. Anton Di Pasquale home by a little over a second from Will Brown, followed by Jamie Wincup, Shane Van Gisberg and the teammates third and fourth. They had a great battle. Then we've got Will Davison, Cam Waters, Chaz Mostert, Jack LeBrock, Tim Slade, Mark Winterbottom. So a couple of people who've been battling all weekend, actually getting into the top 10. That gives them some encouragement going into next week. Percat, Courtney, Heimgartner, Reynolds, Kostecki made it back to 15. He went further back than fullback in that opening <laughs> stanza on that set of tyres. They were shocking, weren't they? Jones, Kostecki, followed by Fullwood, Smith, Pye, uh, Jacobson, Goddard, Hazelwood and Fabian Coulthard. Unfortunately, a DNF that did not finish for him and we spoke to him in the lane.